Today, I want to head in this direction and share something that I've been doing this week with my sixth grade students, and that is creating an infographic in Canva. So to get this going, I'm going to log into Canva. I'm actually thinking of a different kind of infographic this morning. I'm thinking about how could students create an infographic about an animal? I'm sort of envisioning more of a blank canvas in a rectangular shape. So I'm going to go in a different direction here and type YouTube thumbnail. Now, the reason I often search up YouTube thumbnail is not because I actually want to create a thumbnail, but I just know these dimensions work perfectly for laptop screens and televisions. And so I'm going to start students here at a blank canvas. Now, an animal that your middle schoolers will be excited about is the platypus. So the elements tab over here is a gold mine, a treasure chest of images, videos, and audio effects. So let's type platypus here in the elements. And we've got photos and we've got graphics. Let's go over to the photos. And I used this one here. Maybe I should just stick with what I use in class this week. Let me just look at some of the other options. There we go. So I would start with this one. Now here's what I wanna to get to with students. If you are asking them to identify a handful of features about the platypus, how would they go about that? How would they draw the lines and add those labels? You know, those practical details are important. So what I would do it next is I would pull up amazing facts about the platypus, amazing platypus facts. And I don't want images. I want something like this. Nine quirky facts about the platypus. Great. Platypuses are egg laying mammals. There we go. So I'm going to go back to my infographic. And fact number one is that platypuses are egg laying mammals. So how would I go about doing that? I might add some images of eggs. Now I know this isn't terribly scientific because they're not going to be platypus eggs, but let's Let's just throw some eggs in here. And they could be sort of cartoony eggs. They don't have to be photos either. But we'll say these are platypus eggs, okay? And then in terms of writing the fact, I'm going to go to the text control over here and add a little body of text. So platypuses, someone's going to come into the stream and correct me on the plural version of platypus here in a moment but so platypuses are egg laying mammals now what i'm doing is sort of squaring up the shape of the caption and then i'm going to make the size a little smaller okay and then i want to use a little arrow now as i keep adding facts you're going to see me do something here instead of continually going back to this menu to add arrows I'm actually going to duplicate the arrows and the text that I already have on the screen. And I'm going to do that so that the arrows, the markers are absolutely consistent or identical with each other. All right, so I'm changing the color of my arrow and obviously I'm going to change the shape as well. Now this arrow that I chose is going to grate on some teachers because it's kind of a messy style, but that was what possessed me here in this particular case. Okay, so bear with me. So platypuses are egg laying mammals. Okay, so we have fact number one. Now I'm going to go back to my treehugger.com. That's literally the, literally the website. Oh wow, platypuses don't have stomachs. Let's do a little bit of reading here. So let's come back to this tab and this deserves an arrow. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm, I'm going to just copy and I'll use the duplicate button, copy that arrow, and I'm going to rotate it. So this helps the students understand that we want the arrows and captions to be consistent. We don't want them to be like a different size all over the infographic, right? Now I give myself a bit of a challenge here because where am I going to fit my text? I might need to make the arrows larger, I think I will. So I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to copy this arrow over here and I'll move this caption. Now, I actually need to decide now, do I like this font or not? Because this is the time to change it. Maybe I will bold it. Let's see what that looks like. That's not bad. Zoom out a little bit. 
let's close up the elements for a moment. Do I like the look of that? Not bad. So let's copy this caption and put it right here. Platypuses do not have, don't have stomachs. That seems like a pretty significant fact that I think a lot of students would find interesting. Okay, let's go back to my source here and see if we can, they don't have teeth either. They don't have teeth, so that might be our next fact. So I can actually grab these and using the shift key, I can grab these and copy them together, which is really handy, and then move them right over here. And I'll write, platypuses don't have teeth. Okay, kind of fun. So far I'm adding more about what they don't have than what they do have. If you're watching on the replay, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about what I'm doing here. Let's go back to our information website and see if we can find something else that we can add. Platypuses see with their bills underwater. Okay, the bill has electroreceptors and mechanoreceptors. Wow. So let's go back to our infographic and I will copy these separately. So again, I'm duplicating, right? And this is what I encourage students to do. Don't go back to the elements or text and, and create new text boxes. Just duplicate what you've already made and that keeps everything consistent, right? Same size font, same appearance all over the infographic. I'm just gonna say, I'm, let's keep this kid friendly. <laughs> I'm just gonna say platypus bills, bill helps it, and I'll put in quotation marks, C, underwater. It's amazing, what an amazing animal. Okay, now again, remember my trick with the arrow. I'm not going to go up here and add a new arrow that's a different size. I'm just going to duplicate this arrow and then rotate it into position. Platypus bill. And don't worry, we're going to put our platypus underwater here by the end of this little demonstration. So we've got four facts. Can we get one more about the platypus? Males have a venomous spur on their ankle. Do I have room in my infographic to add something about the ankle? I think so. Let's put, let's copy another arrow here. Now, I don't know if this is exactly the ankle, but this is not, you know, the beauty of an infographic is it doesn't have to be super scientific. And then I'm going to copy this and say, platypuses have, or males, male platypuses. So they're the deadly ones. Have a venomous spur on their ankle, ankles both ankles. Okay, so we have five facts so far. We need to give this a title and let's add, let's let's be good examples here and model citations. So I'm going to use the same font, but maybe unbolded. Let's copy this again. And I'm not going to use an actual citation format, but I'll just mention the, the sources here. And who knows when this video lives on YouTube, maybe the sites will appreciate this. So sources cited. I need mygreenworld.org. And what was the last one? Let's see if I can find it here. It was treehugger.com, sources cited. Now you probably, if you work with middle schoolers or really students of any age, you probably have a better citation system or protocol than this, but at least we are modeling good citizenship and <laughs> citing our sources. Now you can, I can move this whole, watch this. I can grab everything here and move it all down the page if I want to, just to create a little more room for my title, which I'm going to add here in a moment. Let's do that next. So when students click on text, they can come over here and see a bunch of interesting templates. And this might give them some ideas. I like a font called Poppins, so. I'm going to left orient my text and say amazing platypus facts. It's kind of a boring one. Is there anything more interesting for students? Amazing platypus facts. There, I think that's the one that I used in class this week. League Spartan, that's not bad. Okay, we'll stick with that. So we are helping students create an infographic. Now, how would I give this platypus infographic a background that makes it look like it's underwater? I clicked on elements right here, and now I'm going to just type underwater. 
and we're going to see a bunch of graphics and photos. So the graphics obviously are not going to be super realistic, but they may be helpful. I'm not really seeing the kind of underwater graphic that I want here. So let's go to photo. And this one looks kind of neat. Now keep in mind, if I use this one, the dark bottom, and this is something you have to teach students, right? The dark bottom of the image is going to kill all the contrast with the text. So can't use that. We're going to have to find something a little better. How about this one? Now, my sixth graders will point out that this is not a realistic background in the sense that platypuses live in freshwater, at least to my knowledge. They don't live in what appears to be ocean water here. I still have a bit of a contrast problem, so I'll show you what I'll do about that. I'm going to send this image right now. He's covering he. The, the underwater shot is covering my platypus. So how do I solve that? I go up here to position and send it to the back. And then what I do is I'm going to lighten my image. So I click the transparency button right here and I'm going to just slide the transparency down. So now I still see, that's pretty good right there at about 50%. I think that looks pretty good friends. All right, so we just walked through how your students could create a pretty sharp looking animal infographic. I'm happy with that. And then how would they download the image? So something that students love to do is they will write my email address right here and send it to me, which actually send it, it arrives in my email inbox, which I don't want because you don't want, I have a lot of ADST students. I have a lot of middle schoolers that I teach design and technology to. So I don't want 150 or 200 emails in my inbox. What I want is the image file in Google Classroom on this activity. And that lets me view them and preview them much more quickly. So I teach students to go over here and hit the download button. They also can hit the three dots here and go down to Google Drive and drop this image right in their Google Drive. And then from there, it's accessible in their Google Classroom. But let's go to download and here they can select a file format. I always recommend PNG if it's going to be a still image. I just had an amazing idea actually. Let's come back to this in a moment and make the water move. I think we can do that friends and that will look really, really cool. So how can we make the, instead of this photo background, how can we give it a video background with moving water? Wouldn't that look amazing? I think that would look so cool. So I'm just going to keep my current search of underwater, but let's go to videos. Let's go to videos and friends, this could be really cool. Now this might look a little too weird. Let's see, this could work. Now again, I need to grab this video and send it to the back. So I do that by hitting the position button and sending it to the back. And the video is also still too dark because see up here with my platypus title, it's killing my contrast. Let's just see what this looks like if I use white text through the whole thing. I'm going to grab all of this text here and just change the color to white. And let's see what that looks like. That might, that still might not be great contrast. Actually, it's pretty good. I think that does look better. Yeah, I think that does look better. So what your students can do is they can save this. I think that looks so cool. Can we just look at that one more time? Come on now. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so students can say, when it comes to video format, students can save it as either an MP4 video, which doesn't have a lot of use. I would suggest they save it as a GIF and then be careful with the size. Now, I'm not going to download it because you'd be waiting quite a while here and it would take probably two or three minutes to download a GIF. You're downloading it from the cloud, from the Canva servers, right? So it's gonna take some time, but it could look really, really cool. I'm just looking through my videos here, and my videos, the can, <coughs> pardon me, the Canva stock videos just to see if there would be something more appropriate for our little friend, right? So I think we're just going to stick with this. I think this is kind of the finished product. Now, again, 
for a lot of uses, I'm going to recommend that students, like certainly when I gave my sixth graders this infographic assignment this week, I asked them to just submit a PNG file, a still file. But like I was showing there, you can make it a video or a GIF, an animation, and that might have different uses as well. We just made infographics, animal infographics in Canva today. If this was helpful, let me know. If you have any questions, leave them below the video if you are catching this on the replay. Thank you so much for joining me today here on the Teachers on Fire YouTube channel or Teachers on Fire, wherever Teachers on Fire lives. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next week, hopefully with something similar to this, something helpful that you can use in your classroom with students this week. Take care, Teachers on Fire, and have a good weekend. Bye-bye.